Moons and Planets by Human Nature 66. The description reads as this mod changes the appearance of the moon over Boston. You can choose between a high res moon or the planet Saturn. Both planets use a proper resolution as you can choose between vanilla size and big size and oversize. Now as the mod author stated this comes in the normal size slightly bigger than the normal vanilla size and a completely oversized fantasy design. The mod author admits that it might not be lore friendly for some and I believe he means in the sense of the position of the moon is a little close but that's all personal preference. There is the normal vanilla size as well. Also the Saturn obviously wouldn't be lore friendly. I decided to add Saturn to this mod showcase to simply give you an idea of what it looks like. On the mod author's page you can choose to have it's just super big fantasy size if you would like that. Personally, I find it very appealing. Granted, that wouldn't be lore friendly, but the moon as it stands, the textures are phenomenal. And I believe the mod now incorporates phases. You may notice that the moon, while looking at it, sort of twists or spins. This isn't the mod author's fault, nor can the mod author fix it. It's just the way the moon is in the skybox. So if you want to blame anyone, blame Bethesda. Now, if this breaks your immersion of the game or it bothers you to see it spin when you stare at it, the mod author simply suggests not to use the mod, which I think is very funny. This is quite a immersive mod to me personally, simply because the moon actually looks like the moon. If you put it to the vanilla size, it's a vast upgrade over the original offerings. Also, it's more realistic looking. Granted, the slightly bigger size is obviously too big, and the huge, gigantic fantasy size is way off. But, in general, this mod's textures are just right. It's right. This is how the moon should look. It should look like something you could gaze into. I mean, if it was to be more realistic, it would probably reflect more light from the sun and glow a bit more, but that's just nitpicking in my book, personally. I fully recommend this mod if you're playing Fallout, without a shadow of a doubt. Chain Link Fences by Kid Gimmick. This is a 4K, 2K, 1K retexture of the Chain Link Fences. This is the first official texture mod by this mod author, so feedback would be greatly appreciated, as he plans to do more in the future. As they say, pictures are worth a thousand words, and a video must be worth, I don't know, a hundred thousand? A million? Who the hell knows? Nobody ever coined a phrase for that. I don't know why because there's plenty of words for me to say. This right here is an immersive mod. This is a must-have mod. Well, maybe not must-have for some people because they probably don't give two rats ball sacks about the chains, the chain link fences, but I do. This mod right here goes in and replaces those horrendous normal textures that just look like they're cut out of cardboard or something and put something beautiful there, something that is immersive and it actually looks like a chain link fence when you get closer and closer you see the level of detail that was put here and it's I don't have any words because it's just that good it's one of those mods that you sit there and you don't think about but as soon as you see that someone's done something about it you have to download it this may be a small mod but I feel it introduces big changes welcome changes it takes something that you may not have noticed before something that was subpar to be honest and then brought it up to standards brought it to snuff i feel that this mod is one of the most immersive i've seen one of the most welcome and definitely a mod i'll be using for the rest of the time i play fallout 4 and hopefully i've brought it to your interest as well lock picking retextured by sava 41 the mod author decided that the default lock picking textures had been bothering him for quite some time, so he decided to do a quick retexture by remodeling the high poly models and breaking in new maps. All new maps are 2K by default. The ones that were vanilla were 1K, and the mod author is made using proper 
and the mod was made using proper physical based texture techniques. This mod I have been using since it came out actually. I don't even remember how I came across it. Most likely I was going through the new releases and I just stumbled upon this and I said to myself, hey, decent looking lock textures. Considering you spend so much time picking locks, it only made sense that someone would finally come in and replace those horrendous normal maps and vanilla textures and put up something that actually wasn't an eyesore. And I am personally glad that this mod exists and I find it to be personally extremely immersive. Passive Water Resources by GHZ FBA. This mod adds 15 water storage items to the building menu under the water category, such as eight tanks, four water towers, and three animated rain collectors. Why is it called Passive Resources? because they generate water points and other bonuses only if your settlement has working slash active resources, pumps, purifiers, etc. According to the vanilla game mechanics, the more water points a settlement has, the higher chance to get daily consumable water the player has. This mod increases that chance. Water tanks, basic containers supplying consumable water and generating water points per day. Water towers, advanced containers supplying consumable water, generating water points per day and improving crop irrigation or settlement comfort. Impressive. Rainwater collectors, containers supplying consumable water and generating water points only when it rains. Now how this water coolers, tanks, etc. works. One is a passive water resource generates settlement water points only if three containers are met. 1A, settlements active water resources, pumps, and purifiers are working pr properly. 1B, the amount of water points generated by 1A are equal to or greater than settlement population water surplus. 1C, the amount of water surplus is equal to or greater than the amount of settlement water passive resources. Two, every passive resource generates one water point per day, two points if the water surplus is twice or greater than the amount of passive resources. Now, number three, if the water surplus goes to zero, passive resources gradually lose one water point per day. This feature is useful to prevent a settlement instantaneously loses all water points after the destruction of active water resources, i.e. during an assault how rainwater collectors work. Rainwater collectors work only when it rains, obviously. Rainwater progressively increases the container water level and generates settlement water points. Three, when it doesn't rain anymore, water level slowly decreases because of evaporation. Player has to choose what to do with rainwater. He or she can immediately dirty the water by pouring in a bottle or drinking it, or wait till the end of the day when the collectors will be drained and left rainwater not evaporated in the meantime will be purified and stored the mod author put a great deal of care and had a lot of attention to detail while creating this mod it's very obvious from reading the description and understanding the mechanics of how the rain collectors work it's just wow really i found it to be insanely immersive and the fact that this mod offers multiple levels that it could fit almost any settlement build. You have simple little canisters that collect rainwater all the way up to something that's on the level of the Institute almost. Well, maybe I shouldn't say the Institute. I mean, the water towers aren't exactly like cutting edge technology. They've been around for longer than I'm sure I've been alive 10 times over. Therefore, this mod pretty much speaks for itself. If you are into settlement building and it is a part of Fallout that you take great care and interest in, then this mod is totally something that can enhance that experience for you on a level that I could not possibly convey to you. Just thinking about the fact that you could have a water tower that creates purified water for the player, that also helps with irrigation, that goes right to your planting and crops, so on and so forth. That much into this mod, it's wow really I'm kind of taken aback by it after reading it and further understanding it more so than just simply collecting the waters I, I, I applaud the mod author this is a great mod I find it highly immersive